When my son was killed, I was as devastated as any mother would be. I loved him, uh, can still do, loved him more than I can ever imagine loving something else or someone else. But I will tell you that on my saddest day, I could still, with absolute honesty, tell you that I experienced incredible joy and incredible gratitude. And that is because of trust. That is because I trust God's promises. My son was training for the Olympics. He was a Nordic skier. And he and my uh, younger boy had moved to Maine and they were ski training with a particular uh, group there. I spent a week writing the manuscript for my first book. And when I hit the save button, I had this incredible lightness of being. And I was absolutely uh, on top of the world. And my youngest son and I drove into town to get ice cream to celebrate because I, I wanted to do something. I was so happy. Uh, and as we drove in, we called my other boys just to share share the share the joy and that was the one that coach picked up and said my son had just been hit and killed and so um, now losing a child is It's the, I think it probably is the most difficult uh, human experience. Um, and it, uh, you know, I mean, it still is, obviously. It, um, it just, it's horrible. He was a remarkable guy, a really, really remarkable young man. He accomplished more than most people do in a lifetime. And so even on my most sad day, because of trust, I never was hopeless. And yes, I know that when my time on earth is done, you will be there wondering, you know, what took you so long? <laughs> um, and I don't see death as the final chapter. I find that one of the struggles, because I talk to a lot of people about loss, especially uh, children, but even spouses or parents, one of the challenges I think is to re-engage with the life that you're expected to lead, the life that you've been given, and make the most of it. Being here really is this incredible opportunity. and. If you're going to be stuck in the past, then you're never going to be in the present. And I think that's one of the problems with death, even if it's expected. Death really is death of your past. Even if you're not the one that is dying, obviously. But when my son was killed, our family died. All of our hopes and dreams, our family dynamics, the life that we knew, was gone. And I think that's one of the challenges because uh, people who face loss don't want the future or the present. They want the past. I mean, that's the reality. Because every person who has suffered loss does experience wonderful things within the midst of it. It's a matter of acknowledging it, it's a matter of embracing it, and it's a matter of your awareness. Those indicators of God's presence are there. It's a matter of whether you're aware of them, and it's a matter of whether you're willing to accept them. But loss is really um, hard. It's really hard. 
and it's really hard to uh, see the future. I mean, you lose a child and um, you don't want to get out of bed. That's the reality. And there's not a day that goes by that my son isn't part of what I am and the experience of his loss. Many people who have suffered a loss feel like they should have this timetable. And many people reach the one year mark and they breathe a sigh of relief and then they wake up the next day and they don't understand why they're still so miserable. <laughs> and they, then they start feeling guilty, like, oh, it's been a year, I should feel better. But the reality is, the first year, it's like you take this big breath and you're holding it. And you just want to reach that one year mark. And you reach the one year mark and you survived and so you finally exhale. But then you realize, actually, you have to inhale again, you have to keep breathing. And year two for most people is actually much worse. Because all of a sudden the world has moved on. And for someone who has suffered loss, year two is still very fresh. And the reality is there. And you go, oh, wow. But I think that people in the midst of loss just need to be very, very gentle with themselves. So in the midst of it, the only thing I would really say is just keep walking forward. I am Dr. Mary Neal, and I am Scarred Beautiful.